Hello, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm just going to show some examples of what you can do with macro and why I think it's the coolest and my personal favorite technique. Obviously, one thing we can do is shoot the very small subject that we otherwise couldn't capture, like the spotted cleaner shrimp or this juvenile trunk fish. Another thing we can do is fill the frame with a portrait of a somewhat larger subject, like this beautiful batfish in the Blue Huron Bridge or this seahorse seen at the Blue Huron Bridge or even a portrait of a very small subject, like this portrait of a seaweed blenny, again, at the Blue Heron Bridge. We can get extreme close-ups of one particular feature of an animal. Now, of course, I like the eye, but here's a few shots of the teeth. This is a parrotfish. This is a close-up of the teeth of a lizardfish, or the teeth of a barracuda. We can also shoot abstract. We can discover detail, pattern, and beauty in the otherwise mundane subject. We can never go underwater armed with a macro lens and say there was nothing to shoot. There always is. Like look at the beautiful detail in this coral, the detail of, the, of a close-up of the teeth and surrounding a pattern of a moray eel, a flying gurnard fin showing beautiful pattern and coloration, the spines of a sea urchin, the skin and texture of an octopus up close, a macro shot of the fins and scales of a queen angelfish, or the bristles of a bearded firewoman. Pretty cool. Sometimes I've discovered things on the computer after the dive that I didn't even notice at the time I took the photo. I shot this Blenny in Grand Cayman and it wasn't until I got back to the hotel when if you look at the black arrow, the Blenny had a small fish in its mouth. I presume he was eating it, I'm not sure though. Or I was snorkeling with one strobe trying to shoot macro on a night dive and I saw this shrimp on the right. I didn't know till after I got back to the hotel there was a much smaller shrimp on the left. Pretty cool. Now of course my favorite is the eye. We can capture detail of the very small. We can document, learn, and even teach. And this is a beautiful shot of a macro shot of the eye of an octopus showing the oval pupil and the similar texture of the iris and surrounding skin, which isn't a surprise since embryologically cephalopod eyes like octopuses and squids, their eyes come from skin um, or ectoderm as opposed to vertebrates and fishes whose eyes come from um, a neuro tissue. We can show corneal iridescence, a form of structural coloration. I had one strobe up from above to highlight that beautiful iridescence on the cornea of this balloon fish. Here's a side view of the eye of a porcupine fish. You can see the cornea and the beautiful large round spherical crystalline lens. We can see the athetic space, the notch in the pupil of this cornet fish, which allows light to come from in front of the fish so it can see uh, binocularly without letting the iris block the light as it goes through the lens and pupil onto the temporal retina. This is a dorsal operculum or flap which drops down in high light, uh, high lighting conditions over the uh, pupil of a stingray and it limits light on a bright sunny day, it limits aberrations and it can even provide some camouflage. This shows beautiful iris coloration and surrounding eye ornamentation of a macro shot of a seahorse eye. This is the most bizarre eye. It's a camera style eye with a cornea, lens, and retina. This is a conch eye. And I haven't even talked about a whole other set of eyes called compound eyes, which we'll talk about later. But this shows a com the compound eyes of a yellow long arrow crab with the two little pseudo pupils, the dark spots. Anyway, this is just a very brief example of some of the cool stuff you can do with macro. In subsequent videos, I'm going to show how to do it, technically how to shoot macro, equipment needed. We'll show examples of composition to keep in mind specific to macro, and I'll show a lot more examples. So thanks so much for tuning in.